In Activity 11, Water Predators, students are introduced to damselfly nymphs and discover another predator-prey relationship, this time in an aquatic environment. They examine the anatomy and observe the behavior of damselfly nymphs. Students then predict how a Daphnia population will be affected by a damselfly nymph, and finally discuss what happens if a predator eats all of its prey. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 11, magnifiers, foam cups, damselfly nymphs in a 10-ounce container with perforated lids, daphnia counter, dropper, baster, container of extra daphnia water, masking tape, damselfly nymph transparency, and vials with caps. You will also need to provide felt tip markers. To prepare for Session 1, make a copy of Activity Sheet 11 for each student. When the damselfly nymphs arrive, place each nymph in a separate 10-ounce container with 2 centimeters of Daphnia water with a few sprigs of vegetation from the shipping container. Do not feed them for several days before this activity. For each team, use the baster to fill a vial two-thirds full with at least 30 Daphnia and cap the vial securely. To begin Session 1, give each student a copy of Activity Sheet 11. Distribute a magnifier, a piece of masking tape, a marker, and a container with a damselfly nymph to each team of two. Have each team label their container with their names and today's date. Allow students time to observe the damselfly nymphs through the magnifiers. Explain that nymph is the term for a young insect that looks somewhat like the adult it will become. Tell students that adult damselflies have full-size wings and can fly around in the air, but damselfly nymphs have only small wings and live in the water. Next, show the damselfly nymph graphic and point out its body parts. Help students identify the head, antenna, thorax, abdomen, gills, wings, and legs on their living damselfly nymphs and label the illustration on their activity sheets. Point out that the wings are too small to be used for flight yet. Then ask students, what do you think the damselfly nymphs eat? Students will probably guess that they eat plants or other organisms in the water. Distribute a dropper and a vial with Daphnia to each team of two. Have students use the dropper to transfer about five Daphnia to the container with the damselfly nymph. Allow students time to observe the results of putting the two animals together. It is likely that the damselfly nymphs will catch and eat some of the Daphnia almost immediately. Ask the students which of these animals is the predator and which is the prey. They should recognize that the damselfly nymph is the predator and the Daphnia is the prey. Then ask students, what do you predict would happen to a Daphnia population if you put them in a container with a damselfly nymph? Have students record their predictions on their activity sheets. Next, have each team add more Daphnia to their container until there are 20 Daphnia, together with the damselfly nymph. Then tell them to write the observation day number, today's date, and the population numbers in the chart on their activity sheets. Finally, place the containers with the damselfly nymphs and Daphnia in an area of the classroom away from direct sunlight and heat sources. Collect the materials and return them to the kit. Collect the activity sheets for use in the continuing observation sessions and session two. To conclude session one, have teams retrieve their labeled containers and examine the contents every day for about a week. Tell students to count the animals just as they did in activity nine. Then, have them record the population data in the chart on the activity sheet. After each observation session, have students clean and replace the kit materials and hand in their activity sheets. To prepare for session two, each student will need his or her copy of activity sheet 11. Each team of two will need a magnifier, a Daphnia counter, a dropper, and its container with Daphnia and damselfly nymph. To begin Session 2, return the activity sheets to students and distribute the materials to each team. Allow teams time to count their Daphnia and damselfly nymph populations and record the numbers in the chart on the activity sheet. When students have completed their work, ask, 
what has happened to the populations in your container. It is likely that the Daphnia will have decreased since the damselfly nymphs have been eating them. Discuss whether or not students' predictions were accurate. Then have students complete their activity sheets. Finally, ask students, what do you think would happen to the damselfly nymph if it ate all the Daphnia in its container and no more were added? Students may realize that the damselfly nymph would starve and die. Explain that in the wild there are usually more prey than predators. To conclude session two, place the Daphnia and damselfly nymphs in an aquarium for further observation. Wash and air dry the materials and replace them in the kit. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM teacher's guide.